Hi, my name is Dr. Karina Yu, and I'm a physician, anesthesiologist. I have three children ages five and under, and I've had the privilege of working in both an MD-only private practice and an academic setting during my three breastfeeding journeys. Breastfeeding is a very personal choice, but the CDC, WHO, AAFP, and ACOG describe various health benefits to both mother and child based on studies. Not breastfeeding is associated with increased maternal risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. Breastfed children perform better on intelligence tests and have a lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome, asthma, obesity, diabetes, ear and GI infections, and severe lower respiratory disease. These health benefits for children persist beyond the duration of breastfeeding, which is why organizations recommend infants to breastfeed for at least six months, up to two years, and the issue has become a matter of public health. Breastfeeding is not always an easy choice. In my experience, I suffered from an initial low milk supply that required formula supplementation. I wanted to give up. However, I watched my babies cry and fuss with presumed abdominal discomfort and gas from formula, which is not as easily digestible as breast milk and certainly more expensive. I worked hard to increase and maintain my supply, drinking 60 ounces of water a day, which sent me to the bathroom hourly, taking fenugreek supplements until I smelled like maple syrup, and pumping every two hours for 30 to 45 minutes to increase stimulation and production. I successfully weaned from formula, and was pleased to see my babies gain weight and thrive. Happy tummies lead to happy sleep. Returning to work, I wondered why breast pumps were so big, bulky, and noisy. Some women would even have to change undergarments to use a hands-free pump. An ER doctor invented a collection system that could fit in your normal undergarments. So in 2015, I used these cups attached to a pump with a battery pack, so I was not plugged into an outlet and was hands-free. By the time I had my second child in 2017, I purchased a newer, smaller pump with a battery that fit into a fanny pack under my clothing. Currently, in 2020, I use a wearable breast pump that fits in my undergarment and is whisper quiet. However, after a bout of mastitis that left me febrile and systemically ill for a day, I returned to a standard pump requiring an electric outlet because of its superior performance. Many lactation rooms are not close enough to the operating room to accommodate fast turnover times between surgery cases. Bathrooms frequently do not have electric outlets in convenient or pi- private locations for use. It can be difficult to relax and achieve the letdown reflux under periods of stress. The maintenance phase of anesthesia is sometimes more relaxing than induction, emergence, pre-op, and post-op. The following video demonstrates the use of a wearable pump in a simulation with a patient requiring CPR. Hey, Sammy, my favorite CAA. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Have you met one of our AA students? This is Corey. Hi. Oh, nice to meet you. First oh, year. You used to work in the OR too, right? Yeah, I was a nurse in the ortho team. All oh, right, wonderful. Cool. How it's low like is our, low? What happened that's... to our... Wow, how low is one? You saw it was like low. You don't have a pulse again? No, no pulse. I still don't have We're a pulse. We're going to start CPR. Okay, guys. Ready? Starting CPR? Okay. One. Call for help. Timer. Help. Help. Are you recording? Two Can you get some happy? Get the code card anywhere? Although this anesthetic was far from relaxing, nobody even knew that I was wearing breast pumps in the operating room while performing CPR and running a code. I would recommend placing and removing the pumps in a non-sterile area. Hi, my name is Dr. Karina Yu. I'm a physician anesthesiologist, and I wanted to demonstrate a few different breast pumps that I have personally used in the past five years. So the first one here requires a battery pack to make it portable. Uh, And you can see there's some tubing here that attaches, and in theory, it could be attached to a device like this, which is able to act as a collection reservoir for breast milk and can be worn inside of your clothes. And um, in that fashion, if you were able to carry that bag around with you attached to it while you were pumping, uh, you could have your hands free. I'm gonna demonstrate what that sounds like. And you can see right now, the room itself, when I am quiet, is about 50 decibels. And when I am talking, it goes up to 65 or so, right there, when I, especially when my pitch goes up. So, here we are.
And you can see we went from about 50 to about 55, 57. And when I'm talking again, it goes up into the mid 60s. And this is roughly equidistant to all the different devices here. And I can even crank it up a little bit more. And it's actually still quieter than my talking voice. The next one that we have also has a form that uh, this one is particularly is actually uh, only AC adapter, but there is a form that is portable very similarly. And it's hardly any making any noise. It maybe went from 50 to 53. between 51 and 52 as it's working. And this is a much more smaller portable device that actually could be worn in a fanny pack and similarly connected to tubing and a collection device like this that could be worn under your clothes so that you're fully independent, fully mobile. And it's possible that it read now as 51 decibels and again, wider than my talking voice, which is ranging from the 55 to 65, it appears. Okay, and I can increase that to the highest setting there. And similarly, it looks like it's going between 51 to 52 decibels there. Now, this was all requiring some sort of device to collect the milk under your clothes. This, um, Includes the pump, which is consolidates these three big clunky items, even though this is pretty small. Uh, you can see it's the size of my hand here. Um, and it's the pump and the device all in one. Turn it on here. And so it maybe went up to 54 or so on that one. And here's another one with, again, the collection reservoir for the milk, in addition to a very small pump that's wearable underneath your clothes. And this might be one of the quietest ones at all. It's actually just ranging between 50 to 51. And just for a frame of reference here, I've actually attached myself here to a pulse oximeter to give you an idea of what normal operating room sounds are like. And there's a little bit of a hum in this operating room because there are a few machines that are turned on. And you're gonna be able to see what a pulse oximeter sounds like in your decibel value. And again, these are all relatively close to my decibel meter up there. So it's ranging right now between 51 to 55. And again, my speaking voice goes up higher to the mid 60s or so. So as you can see, actually all of these devices are quite quiet in the operating room and essentially not a noise distraction at the very least.
In summary, breast pumping in the workplace is a public health issue that needs to be addressed. Modern day wearable breast pumps can be worn effectively in the operating room underneath the clothing while performing clinical care and do not cause a noise distraction. Items worn privately underneath the clothing should remain exactly that, private and personal. In the same way that no one challenges a woman's right to wear a menstrual cup, tampon, or pad, society should support a woman's right to wear a breast pump underneath their clothing. If you agree with this statement, our collective voices are stronger than my own. Please help me gather data by filling out the anonymous form on your experience with breast pumping in the workplace. Thank you.